Hello everyone, I'm here with Mothra the Data Science Bunny in this ever-growing video series about the representation of poor in the media. This is part two of episode analysis from the season seven episode of The Simpsons, seen from the class struggle in Springfield. For part one, I will link it here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, or visit Patreon for notifications on when videos will come out. I am still working on participation awards. I just keep running into copyright issues because apparently movies that came out over 60 years ago don't like audio, video, or images being used. Also, just ignore the cats and the bunny running around in the background. The first video ended at the family's first visit to the country club. At home, they are gathered in the living room. While Marge is energized from her experience, the rest of the family is clearly exhausted, and Bart voices his frustration. Handing me towels till I paid him to stop. Should've held out longer, boy. The rich are different from you and me. Yes, they're better. I've never been anywhere that had a bathroom attendant, even in other countries. Outside of the US, I've been to Eastern and Central Europe, Canada, and Mexico, so I don't know about countries outside of that. Until I saw this type of thing in movies or TV shows, I would have had no idea because a bathroom attendant seems unnecessary if there is cleaning staff. There is also some transformation in Marge at this point with her vocabulary. I thought it was so opulent. Like the Playboy Mansion, but non-sexual. That place is weird. Opulent meaning something is very luxurious or lavish. Certainly something that would be associated with country clubs. However, she is still who she is. She compares the country club to the Playboy Mansion, something that is mentioned on the TV and magazines that are often sold in convenience stores. While this might have been intended as a joke, it is interesting that she uses this comparison instead of the Waldorf Astoria in New York or the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. When Lisa speaks up, it's clear that the family didn't expect March's response. When she recognizes that shock, she tries to soften it by adding that socially better caveat. Socially better? And if we fit in, we can be better too! But the family is starting to see that Marge does indeed want better. I mean, she did a good job of fitting in. I think Marge, more than anyone in the family, understands that if you want to move up and have those opportunities in life, you have to figure out how to play the game and figure out how to be part of that culture. Even Homer seems to accept part of this, recognizing that she did a number on those rich suckers. The implication that you can't just be yourself to advance because you have to know how to use the people and resources around you. They recognize that because of this random luck of finding this suit, the family has an opportunity that would not have existed otherwise. It also helps that Marge is attractive. The combination of this with the suit adds to this opportunity. There are many articles out there, and I only added in the link from the Business Insider below because searching this on the internet just goes down kind of a sad rabbit hole, and I put the article that seemed to have the most common points. Talent might help, but it still matters how you look. What are you doing, boys? You shouldn't be lifting those heavy boxes. I always do it. I'll take care of it. Hold it a second. You've watched me pick up boxes every day for four years. Suddenly now you want to help me? Why? I don't know. I just thought... No, you look me in the face and you tell me why. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm just going to go get lunch, okay? Can I get you anything? Let's look at Susan Boyle. There were constant jokes and rude comments about her appearance from people watching, as well as the audience and judges from Britain's Got Talent. Even though it is edited, they did her dirty. When she said she was 47, Simon gave her a horrible look, but she seemed very comfortable with herself and had a sense of humor as the audience laughed at her and her appearance. Why is it a shock at this point if someone is talented but doesn't look a certain way? She did go on to release seven more albums and as her success grew, she changed her hairstyle, her clothing, and she lost weight. I'm not saying it's bad, but this does appear to be a pattern. While Simon apologized for his comments after the fact, shouldn't we be asking why he felt he could comment that way in the first place? Unlikely Susan would have been invited to a country club on a guest pass. And while we're on the country club thing, this might be a shock, but I'm not, nor have I ever been, part of a country club. In researching the history of country clubs, American Heritage points out that some of the influence was J. Marie Forbes, who said in 1882 that, quote, The general idea is to have a comfortable clubhouse for the use of members with their families, a simple restaurant, bedrooms, bowling alley, lawn tennis grounds, etc. Also to have race meetings and occasionally music in the afternoon, and it is probably that a few gentlemen will club together to run a coach out every afternoon during the season to convey members and their friends at a fixed charge." End quote. 
It was also a way to copy British manners and traditions. This coincided with golf starting to get more exposure and is a contributing factor into how these two items became intertwined. The first country clubs charged $30 a year, roughly $685 in 2021. If we look at wage data from that time for the working class like masonry, stonecutters, locksmiths, and industrial jobs, most made less than $20 a week. But that just wasn't exclusive enough for the country clubs at the time. So they started creating rules about who could join and made different levels of membership based on the amount of dues they paid. I don't know if this will pick it up, but there is a thunderstorm going on, so if some of that catches on to the audio, that's what that is. Since 1990, memberships for this aging relic have gone down 20% according to the article, The Death of the Country Club. Part of this shift from country clubs is the cost, along with golf not being as attractive as an activity for the younger generations. We'd rather watch TV, go to the movies, travel, be out in nature, participate in various hobbies, and other stuff that doesn't require country clubs. If we have trouble affording a house, why would we put our money into something like a country club? In the article linked below from Chestnut Hill Local, younger generations are also more aware of marginalized groups being excluded. Quote, Los Angeles County Club banned Jewish people until 1977. August National Golf Club didn't accept black members until 1990, and women would have to wait until 2012." End quote. Some country clubs are trying to change by making the environment more family friendly, but as long as that stigma of elitism is there, country clubs are probably going to die out. On the family's next visit, we see Kent Brockman's daughter who doesn't think it's a waste of time to yell at the help by explaining that she wanted an abalone sandwich. <sighs> At this point, I started to realize most of the stuff I'm unfamiliar with is something rich people know. Abalone is a snail, and yes, I had to look that up. While it does rhyme with bologna, it implies that bologna is a poor people food because it's thrown directly into the trash very publicly. If fried bologna sandwiches are mentioned in something else besides Hillbilly Eulogy, please comment. My brother has a first name. M-R-I-T-C My bratwurst has a second name It's S-C-H-N-A-C-K-E-N-P-F-E-F-F-E-R-H-A-U-S-E-N Of course, this enrages Lisa, who tries to stand by her convictions, but gets distracted by horses. I'm not going to talk about animating horses again. My rant is already in part one of this episode analysis. I don't think this is out of character for Lisa, since we already saw her show an acceptance for, quote, rich things when she convinced Marge to buy the Chanel suit. Now that she is at the country club, Lisa accepts this, quote, rich hobby of horse riding. The women at the country club are shown playing bridge with Marge, and Marge goes back and forth about whether or not she should win and how it would affect her standings. She does decide to go ahead and win, showing that they'll take the remaining tricks. It's mentioned that the other team could have won by switching to a different suit, this is another one of those passive-aggressive remarks reminding Marge of her place. Throughout the episode, the women have had different outfits, though Marge has really only been in the one. Marge is visibly upset, but doesn't fire back. Anyone who's had to work at a customer service job knows that if you respond back rudely, you get fired and it ends up carrying into other parts of your life when that stress gets to you, and you also just kind of learn to take that crap when it's thrown at you. In this scene, though, no one defends Marge or sticks up for her. She might be a guest at this country club, but Marge will always be an outsider. One could argue that Evelyn sort of defends her when the other women are out of earshot, but it's more out of self-preservation to make sure her image is not tarnished. She might want to be friends with Marge, but her perception to others is going to overshadow that. In this visit to the country club, the rest of the family is starting to try and find things to do but not under the guise of fitting in. A good example of this is Homer trying to play golf, but not realizing that if he wants to cheat, the scores need to go down and not up. Again, this is added for comedic effect, but let's take a second on that. Baseball, basketball, football, and soccer are all sports where having the highest score wins. If you haven't been exposed to golf or don't know how to play, having a lower score is not necessarily intuitive. It is entertaining to see Tom Kite teach Homer how to golf. While funny, it's another passive-aggressive way of dealing with people. If you notice, none of the adults at the country club really yell at each other, except for the kid. Krusty is a little different because with his character, 
I think it's more prodding at the trope of clubs not allowing in Jewish members. With the rest of the family finding activities, they start to come around to Marge's side. However, it's now the rest of the family that is energetic and wanting to share their experiences as Marge gets more and more stressed, focusing on trying to fit in and not being her usual attentive self. When Homer tries to talk to Marge about golf, she is zeroed in on the sewing machine. Normally, she would be listening and working with Homer. For Homer, the country club is just a place to play golf, but for Marge, she wants to fit in and she craves that acceptance. Marge continues to work on the suit into the night after Homer falls asleep. This is where the episode starts to get painful for me. This intensity of trying to patch something together last minute, hoping no one will notice and no one will see through this facade living with this mental anguish of imposter syndrome. It is worth noting that each time the suit is altered, there is slightly less material, which makes sense. The more you mess with hems and fabric, the quicker it can break down. It would have been nice to see Marge add something to it, like changing out the black border. Though the suit is altered quite a bit as they are out playing croquet, once again, her outfit is the first thing commented on. Croquet is another one of those sports, quote unquote, that while practice and skill are helpful, you're probably not going to break a sweat. Three, wood. Now enter the force of your swing. I suggest feathered touch. You have entered Power Drive. Now your outfit, Marge. The vest says, let's have lunch. But the coolants say, you're playing. While the comment is more positive in this instance, it's still followed up by Evelyn saying she'll sponsor Marge family for membership, depending how the ball on Friday goes. Oh, that would be a dream come true. I'll be there with bells on. Bells? Where exactly will you be attaching them to that mangled Chanel suit? She visibly has this show of emotion and excitement of the possibilities. This is then undercut by Sue asking where they will be pinned to that mangled Chanel suit. This is a classic example of a group of people accepting terrible behavior because that's just how they are. It's a poor excuse and for Marge it brings up that insecurity that they are constantly judging her by her appearance. Evelyn adds to this, justifying that it's just how she is, but Evelyn adds insult to injury by saying, I know you'll just have a lovely new outfit. Who needs a punch in the face when the people around you have already measured you and found you wanting? You have been weighed. You have been measured. And you absolutely have been found wanting. But while this seems to be getting worse for Marge, the rest of the family appears to be doing well. Homer's skills at golf get him a chance to hang with the boss and play a game. If he didn't have this chance at the country club to find out that he has this skill, would he have ever figured it out? How many people never find out if they have a talent for something if they aren't exposed to it or have the opportunity? We go back to Marge and she is still trying to change this Chanel suit. Part of this is because she wants to make sure that she gets the most use out of the money she spent on it because this is the only thing she owns that is a designer name item. There might not be funds to buy high quality material to add to it either. As Marge is sewing, she half listens to Homer about his golf game with Mr. Burns and only responds to him to not do a silly dance because they can't slip up. Marge knows that she is being judged constantly and I think she feels this is the same thing that is happening with the rest of the family. Homer doesn't really respond, he just kisses Marge and heads out. Then Lisa is shown being super excited about having access to horse riding. Mom, did you like horses when you were my age? Cause that I don't know. Lisa, tonight is very important. Mommy has to alter her suit so it looks like a totally new one. Mom, do you want to know the 15 reasons I like horses better than cars? What, a horse never has... I really need to concentrate on this, Lisa. Would you mind just... You know how... Both of them are so focused on their own thoughts, they don't listen to each other. Lisa doesn't see how distracting she is until Marge loses patience and is unable to focus. Lisa leaves without saying a word. Marge accidentally steps on the pedal, dragging the dress in and ruining it. On the surface, it might appear that Marge should have been aware of accidentally hitting the pedal. It's not that far-fetched, though. We have seen her previously in the episode working late to alter the suit, so she is probably suffering from a lack of sleep that adds to her stress and irritability. At times like this, I guess all you can do is laugh. That silence. 
The fact that she isn't crying or showing any emotion broke my heart. The shock of the situation, the realization that she was this close to a dream. The amount of things floating around in her head at this point is just gut-wrenching, but I like that they kept the heaviness of the moment. A moment where she is starting to realize that balancing family and being part of this country club probably won't work. I do like that the first thing she does is go to her sister's instead of buying something. It's clear that if they didn't have $90 for that other dress, where else is she going to go to get that same type of bargain or material or outfit? The first dress is clearly too big and clearly more of a branding style. Certainly something that would not be at the country club. It's telling when she is told that there are cigarette burns that can be patched with blue vinyl. Not red, blue, which means that the material is probably something stretchy, but if it isn't, it's probably something very plasticky and cheap. Unlike the women at the country club, Marge doesn't insult her sister, but rather throws herself under the bus, so to speak. The second dress is a purple tube dress that is extremely short and was originally a Halloween costume that made its way into her wardrobe. Again, the hoops, the heels, the purse, all accessories that are typically associated with lower class fashion. The purple is also a bright color in contrast with the neutral, earthy, and pastel tones of the rich patrons. I won't focus too much on the golf game with Homer and Burns, as that will be in the golf episode. One of many that are being worked on. While this game is occurring, we see Marge struggling to drive to Ogdenville last minute, apparently speeding. During the golf game, Homer learns that Smithers has been cheating secretly for Burns. In order to keep Burns' secret quiet, they say they will support their membership. While Homer doesn't care, Marge does, so he goes along with it. So again, covering up indiscretions and other aspects. Burns knows that using family as a carrot works as blackmail towards Homer. This would not work with Burns as he had no issue using poison potatoes to keep his fortune. But fortune ended up smiling on me while snuffing the life from my siblings. My older brother was trampled by a horse. My sister died of a poisoned potato. My twin was shot. That girl was stabbed. He ate another poisoned potato. Spontaneous combustion fell down a well. Potato, potato, and impaled on the Chrysler building. At the mall, Marge asks if there is another suit or high-quality clothes, something she would not have said the first time around. I think it's funny that the sales clerk tells her that there is slightly burnt Sears activewear coming in this afternoon. When the show aired, Sears was kind of midline. It was not a luxury store, but it was also not seen as quote-unquote lowbrow as Walmart. Also, it's hilarious that active wear is part of a rich people thing now. Marge drives through a different part of town that is supposed to mimic Rodeo Drive. Want to know where I learned how to pronounce that correctly? That's right, the Mighty Ducks movies. Marge admires a dress in the Chanel store. When they get ready to go later, the family is waiting by the door of the house. They respond by saying Marge looks good, and Lisa remarks that she can do anything with that sewing machine. This turns into a situation where Lisa is overly inquisitive, and Marge lies that it was from the outlet store. You mean it's a new dress? Where did you get it? The outlet store. Wow, two finds in one store. What are the odds? Call it fate. Let's go. How much did it cost? A dollar. Let's go. We tax or without? Without? Let me go. So we tax how much was it? Why do you always have to question everything I do? You look nice is all. Lisa is visibly confused. Marge says out loud is subconsciously what she's saying to herself. Marge has been questioning herself through this entire episode. I don't see this instance as Lisa being annoying so much as she is excited that her mom was able to find something new. It's just that in this moment, it comes across as annoying. This saddens Marge with the realization of what she said out loud. Instead of driving up to the building, Marge insists that they park far away so that no one sees the car. Homer, of course, wanting to avoid being called Sir. We can't drive this up there. They'll see the dent. They'll see the coat hanger antenna. Stop the car. We're walking. Marge, bellies. For once, maybe someone will call me Sir without adding, you're making a scene. This is something Marge told him to avoid doing earlier in the episode. So we don't know if something happened during the golf game with Burns. As they walk up, they talk about what they're going to do. While Bart has been pretty much missing in this episode, it sounds like he's been doing some grifting or card shark stuff. Lisa wants to see if any of them know the names of people who work for them. Marge tells them not tonight. And in, it's interesting in this particular shot, Marge is higher up on the hill, separate from the family. 
a visual representation that she is trying to rise up in the ranks while her family is not. In other words, don't be who you usually are, even Marge. Their solution is basically not to speak or interact in order to make this work. You kids should thank your mother. Now that she's a better person, we can see how awful we really are. I think this is said in a genuine tone. The family hasn't been trying to sabotage Marge's effort. They're trying to do what they can, but I think Homer realizes he can't help Marge move up in the country club, but he doesn't want to bring her down. Marge thinks for a minute before running back down the hill to them and immediately grabbing Maggie. In this episode, when she's wearing the suit, we don't see Marge holding Maggie very often. So when she immediately goes to the child that sang her outfit earlier, it shows where her heart really is. And it's with her family. Now instead of pointing out their characteristics as negatives, she reframes them in positive ways, although when she gets the Bart, she could have said something slightly better for the kid she always calls her special little guy. But it does show that she likes him too. I like Bart! I like Bart! And I like my old green dress. <sighs> I didn't have to spend our savings on this stupid game. <gasps> our savings? Don't worry, I saved the receipt. We'll have a $3,300 credit at Chanel. The whole family gasps. That's a big deal. For those of us struggling to pay bills, spending savings on something as frivolous as clothing is completely out of our realm of thought. A household with $3,000 in savings is huge for many of us. That emergency fund can be the difference between losing a job because you can't afford vehicle repairs or turning the gas in the house back on. Of course, in the ballroom, we find out that it was the party confirming their membership. Well, I wonder where Marge could be. She's missing her own initiation. I hope she didn't take my attempt to destroy her too seriously. Can we stop feeding this idea that being mean to each other is a form of initiation? I know it's supposed to be a bit ironic here, but I wouldn't want to be friends with these people either if I would end up being on the receiving end of most of these types of comments. However, it is adorable that Burns makes a genuine attempt to make a cake for Homer. It's interesting that Burns is actually kind of nice to him throughout this episode. I think part of it is because he sees Homer as more of an equal since he's at the country club. Another running gag throughout the series is that Burns never remembers Homer's name. So it's interesting that when Homer is more of an equal, Burns takes the time to remember this information. It ends with the family eating at Krusty Burger. The place is empty, but they are still dressed and squished into a booth, but Marge looks happy. She's comfortable, she's around her family that loves her, and she doesn't have to pretend to be someone she's not. Like most sitcoms, the episode ends with things returning to normal. However, it's a great example of how different two worlds can be. But more than that, it's an example of how opportunities are mostly luck. The chance to get out of poverty isn't always in our control, and it can affect our health and the relationships around us. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and visit Patreon. Until next time. Ball is in. Parking lot. Would you like to play again? You have selected no.